People think because mostly Syria has dropped out of the front pages that the war is ending, but in reality that's not really true. We're looking at basically what a lot of people are warning could be another humanitarian disaster in a war that still isn't really over. Barış Pınarı Harekatı'nda görev alan kahraman Mehmetçiklerimize muvaffakiyetler diliyor. Her birini alınlarından öpüyorum. That's partly because it fulfills a campaign promise that he made in 2016 and he's making again this year. We want to bring our soldiers back home. These are the endless wars. And it makes Turkey, which is a NATO ally and a really strategically important partner in the region, it makes Turkey happy. The problem is, is that the US is leaving behind Kurdish troops on the ground, whom are an American military partner, but Turkey sees them as a terrorist group. Now that the US have left the area, that's basically a green light for Turkey to attack them and potentially open a new front in Syria's war. Many of the mid-rank and high-rank commanders in the SDF have links to the PKK, which is a guerrilla Kurdish movement that's been fighting the Turkish state since the 1980s. And the PKK is recognized by the UK, by the US, as an outlawed terrorist group. So what Turkey says is that the SDF is the same thing as the PKK, just with a different name. With this operation, Turkey is saying it's going to secure a 32 kilometer border zone. What Turkey wants to do is move up to 2 million Syrians into this border zone, but that's not where those people are originally from. Most of the refugees in Turkey are Arab Syrians who came from places like Aleppo and a little bit from places like Raqqa and Deir Ezzor. What a lot of international observers are saying is that moving these Syrian Sunni Arab populations into this area, which is predominantly Kurdish, amounts to basically demographic engineering and it will completely change you know, the structure of what that part of the country looks like. Donald Trump has basically handed over the custody of these 90,000 people to Turkey, but it's very unclear how on earth a transfer like that would work. So there's a really real threat that these 90,000 people with links to ISIS could go free, could release each other from the camps, from the prisons, and you're looking at what could be, you know, a resurgence of ISIS across Syria. If it escalates to a level where there is large-scale fighting between Turkish troops and between the SDF and ISIS takes advantage of the chaos, what you're looking at could potentially be a really ugly situation for civilians who get caught up in that. <laughs>